Myth number two, forced continuity. Does everyone know what forced continuity is, right? You buy this product and I'm forcing your ass into $30 a month. You have to call me to cancel. I've done forced continuity. You're gonna get, on average, around 50% of the people that cancel right away, right? I saw Mike Hill. Mike Hill, is that about right? About 50%, and you've run hundreds of thousands of people through it. About half will cancel before they even get the first billing. So knowing that, optional continuity, okay? It's kind of forced. You put it in their shopping cart, but you give them the option to take it away, because here's the thing. Half are gonna cancel anyway. Why let customer support deal with that? Why get someone pissed off saying, I don't wanna do it, this is bullshit, I didn't know I was getting charged $80 a month. Don't force them into it. They're gonna cancel anyway, give them the opportunity to take it out, which is fine. And then you're gonna increase your conversions anyway because people don't feel like they're forced into it. Like, you know what, it's not a force, so I can kinda of do it as I will. So it's gonna increase overall conversions, less customer support headaches, less chargebacks, less refunds, and again, they're gonna cancel anyway. Here's an example, I just did a launch two days ago, how many have gotten emails so far about the Continuity Summit? Okay, we gotta get more affiliates out there. But this is how it looks. I'm using one shopping cart for this program, but you see the arrow. I have the 30-day trial to the Inner Circle and the Recurring Revenue Report. After 30 days, it's 97 a month. And by the way, in the copy, I'll show you later, I've told them 10 times that they're gonna have this after 30 days. But they had the little X, and they could remove it. And when they try to leave the page, there's a splash that comes up in a video, and it's, the whole offer is a dollar, I'm saying, by the way, it's only, a, like, I'm not breaking up into monthly payments of 25 cents. It's a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I was actually going to do that for uh, a little comedy bit. But, so I tell them, look, and if you don't want the, the recurring revenue, don't take it. Click X, and you're not on it. And why did I do that? Because I have a good upsell path, and I want the customers anyway. Because I know if I develop that relationship, they're going to buy from me eventually. So, myth number three, there's only one form of continuity. You know, people always think there's only one type. I can only have one form of continuity. I gotta get my one program out there, the $30 a month, the $100 a month, and then I'm good. As I showed you, you could have dozens and dozens of continuity income streams, and you should, right? As, I don't know if Robert Allen's still here, you know, multiple streams of income. I should write a book, multiple streams of continuity income. Create as many as you can, and I'll give them a percentage. <clears throat> Myth number four, when people think of continuity, they think it's only membership sites, and that's not true. Again, I showed you, there's software, there's physical products, there's a lot of other types of continuity programs you can create. Here are some models that I found that work the best. <clears throat> Number one, again, a newsletter CD program. This is one of the easiest to create. How many of you do a physical continuity program? Some type of newsletter CD? Okay, only a handful of you. Everyone should have some type of physical continuity program. This is, and I'm gonna show you right now how to create it. <clears throat> you know, we, we get scared of physical products because a lot of us are internet and we're like, oh, it's the lifestyle, digital products, yeah, yeah, man, that's cool. This is more automated than everything else I do. I literally send my fulfillment house an MP3 and a PDF, and it's done. I don't have to, I tried it at first. I used to have thousands of people, and I would, I got the CD burner. I was putting labels on them. <laughs> they didn't like me, to, I would literally go to the post office with like 18 garbage bags filled with uh, envelopes. That was fun. So, easy ways to do it. You can interview someone, you know, a CD of the month with an expert. I was talking to uh, Jack Canfield the other day, just said, that's such an easy continuity program for you. Uh, but don't call, you know, you guys know a lot of this, don't call them interviews, call them a coaching program, right? My recurring revenue report, that's, if you see on the thing there, that's coaching CD volume one. Print newsletters, and it's really easy to add tag-along advertisements. There's a reason why Glazier Kennedy, their model is still the print newsletter, because it works. Here's an anatomy, this is how my print newsletter looks. Basically, when I do a coaching session with someone, I get it, I don't do a transcription, I go through it line by line, and I pull out all the highlights. Again, why am I doing that? To make it better for the subscriber, right? If the subscriber's gonna get all, it's just all meat, 100% pure content, and people appreciate it, and they stay on. People have been on this for a couple of years now. So I, I basically go through all the highlights, I take out all the chunks, I show the screenshots, but that's really easy to do. You don't even have to do it yourself. I now have an intern who just did the last issue for me, helped do the first draft of it, and it worked really, really well. So it's very simple to do. 12 pages is about what you need. Right? <clears throat> when you start going longer than that, you start going books each month, it's just too much to consume, and people cancel. 